Hey everyone, what's going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another Max video. Although, it's also a very special video, because this is going to be the last video that I make where I talk about Max. Yeah, it's big, it's a little bit sad. Um, the fact is, well, so people are always saying to me, they're always saying, Sam, how come your clothes are so poorly thought out? And how come your fingers look so weird? And how come you're not making Max videos anymore? And, you know, to those people I say, well, those first two things I don't really have any control over. And as for the Max videos, the thing is, it's not that I'm not inspired to create music anymore. The thing is, I've just found something that's so much better and so much more powerful that it makes it hard to come back to Max. And I'm so happy that today I get to share that thing with you and talk about the most powerful music making tool that I've discovered in, I think, my whole life. And, uh, you know, I'm going to share that tool with you today. It's, uh, it's really something special. And, well, here it is. Uh, so, yeah, you know, as soon as you look at this, you probably say, you're probably thinking the same thing I thought, which is, oh my god, the new interface for Live 11 looks beautiful, but the thing is, this actually isn't Live 11. This is a new DAW from Microsoft, and of course, Microsoft, the name, it's synonymous with electronic music. Uh, this DAW is called Excel, and it's a grid-based music-making environment. And obviously, Microsoft, you know, they set a very high bar for themselves, but I really feel like with Excel, they have surmounted even their own standards to create something that really is unlike any other way to make music. So let's just, you know, you see this thing and right away you can just, you can just go. You know, there's no barrier between you and your creativity. Anything you want to put into these cells, you can put in there. And it's just something that you always wanted in Max, but you never, you never felt like you could really get there. And with, with Excel, you can just do it. Um, so if you want to take it even further, though, what you can do is start to add interactivity to these, uh, to these what, what Excel calls sheets. And all you have to do is start by adding a button. And this is just where things, get, things just get brilliant. Because, you know, in Max, you click the button object, in the toolbar, it creates a button. In Excel, not so. No matter how many times you click it, if you click and drag it, it doesn't do anything because Excel subverts your expectations and forces you to reevaluate your own creative habits. What you actually have to do is click this button and then with no visual feedback whatsoever, somehow intuit the fact that you're supposed to then click into your sheet to bring up this window that is cryptic and makes no sense whatsoever. And then once you've done that, you push new and it freezes apparently for a second or two and then opens this other very weird window where basically you have no idea what's going on. It's just like, it's. I feel like when Pierre Boulez reached into Philip Menry's chest and first pulled out his rib and pressed the, the first version of Max into wet clay. This is what he really envisioned. And the, the software, the technology just wasn't ready, but now we have it. And you can actually do things like take this button here, move it down over here, and then back up here in the Visual Basic Editor. This is a, a, an extremely powerful uh, musical programming language called Visual Basic that Microsoft has made uh, for composition. And so what you can do with it is, for example, we could uh, define a function. So just to give you an example, you can define a function like sub, um, you know, set color. And the way that this works is you do sub set color and you say, you give it some arguments. So say row as integer, uh, call as integer, and then maybe um, index as integer. And then inside the body of this function, you would do range cells of row call, uh, cells row. Call. This is one of the things I really love is how um, Visual Basic makes you repeat yourself um, so that you, you know, it, it really gets, it's really um, confident that you know what you're doing. And then we can type in here interior dot uh, color index and then set that equal to the index. And now if I take this, I come down to this button, I can do set color one, one, four. And when I press this button, you can see that it will set the uh, first cell here to green. It's just so, it's just, it's an intuitive language. It just, it just flows, you know? Now I could come up here and take the same 
function, copy it, paste it, change the change the name to set string, and instead of an index here, we'll give make give a, a new variable str, make sure it's a string, and then it's, instead of setting the color index, we'll set the cell value, and we'll set it to be equal to str. And now we can have this button set the string one one. Uh, to be, say, the string play. I click this button now, and it sets the contents of the cell to play. And you can maybe see where this is going. If I make a new button here uh, and push new, there's my new function. Um, and I'm just going to do the same thing, but of course the opposite. So I'll do set color one, one, uh, three, which is red, and set string one, one, stop. And now we have, you know, the beginnings of a musical instrument here. We can play and we can stop, you know. Um, it's just really, uh, really powerful and intuitive. So now if we want to add some interactivity, some, some, some functionality to this, what I want to do is, is make a step sequencer. And we're going to use these building blocks to make that. Um, and obviously if we're making a step sequencer, the first thing we need is some, some, something to store the step. So we'll do dim uh, seek step as integer and uh, also we need something to um, uh, oh, we need something else oh yeah of course we need to know if we're playing or not so we'll do dim is playing as boolean and now we need to write a function that will actually do the sequencing so we'll have an, add another sub here call it sequence and what sequence is going to do is it's going to take the step seek increment it, and then set these uh, the appropriate cells to the appropriate values. So the first thing we'll do is white out the previous row. So we'll do four. Uh, actually, we need, uh, so we'll do dim um, mm, call as integer, and then four call equals. Uh, so to go from this column to this column, we'll do four call equals two, two, six, and then uh, set color of, and the row here is the sequence step, so we'll do seek step plus one, call, and set the color to be white, which is zero, uh, expected equals. Of course, this is just more of the brilliant Visual Basic syntax, is if you're not going to use the return value from set color, you have to get rid of the parentheses, of course. Just the kind of intuitive genius from the, 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 music, the musical minds at Microsoft. So. Uh, now I've done that, that whites out the row of cells, and the next thing that I'll do is take the sequence step and set it equal to one plus the sequence step mod eight. And then we'll do the same thing again, only this time we're setting the cells to be uh, green. And that uh, takes care of setting the first row, but now of course we need to go back and do this whole thing again. So what we'll do is we'll uh, first call do events to give the application some chance to run its own events. You know, I don't know what those are. Nobody knows what those are. It's just part of the, the secret uh, spirit at the core of Excel, the, the musical core of Microsoft Excel. And then after we call do events, we can call application dot on, uh, I didn't spell it right, application dot on time. And the time is gonna be now plus time value of Zero, zero hours, zero seconds. And you might be wondering, well, what about millisecond precision? And that's the amazing thing. With Excel, you don't need millisecond precision. One second is as much granularity as you get, and it's all the granularity you need. So that's when the next thing is gonna happen, and we'll just call sequence again. And of course, to make sure this doesn't happen no matter what, we'll wrap this in an if is playing, then do this. And then we'll need a, an end if to keep this uh, from, from looping, uh, to, to, to close out the end statement. And then of course, all we need to do is in button one click, we do if, if, if is playing equals false, then, and we'll just do all these things. And if, where these things are, we'll set the seek step 
We'll set that equal to seven, so it's starting at the last row. We'll do is playing equals true. One thing that you'll notice when you're working in the Visual Basic Editor here is that between the time when you push the key and when the character actually shows up, there's about a half second of delay. And I just love it. It means that I can type at about 10% of my normal speed, and it just gives me so much more time to think and to plan my next action and to get myself in a compositional mindset. So having done that, I'll now call Sequence to kick off the sequencing process. And then in button two click, of course, all we have to do is set is playing to false. And that should be everything we need. I'm gonna save this now, cause it's you know really starting to get good. I'll call it book A and make sure that I'm using the macro enabled workbook format. Just one of the many brilliant formats that Microsoft has given us. Push this button and immediately you can see that our step sequencer is off and our step sequencer is running. I, I'm excited. I, I feel like um, you know musical things are about to happen and that's really, really cool. Uh, great, so, 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 far, uh, so far so good. The next thing that we'd like to do is actually have this play a sound. And the thing that's so beautiful about Excel as a music playing environment is uh, that it can connect to an, another powerful music making tool called AppleScript. So I'm gonna open up the AppleScript editor and make a new document. And I'm gonna save this document as play. And in order for Microsoft Excel to find it, you save it in library, application scripts, com.microsoft.excel. So this play script, what it's gonna do is we'll have a, a function here called play uh, it takes an arg string, which is just some kind of string, um, play end, expected with but found end of script. Um, how does this syntax, I'm just, oh, end play, of course, not play end, end play. Great. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, use a shell script to say, to, to call the OS 10 say command. So we'll say do shell script. And here for testing, we'll do say in uh, the voice of, I don't know, Samantha. And we'll say, hi there. And if I now, to the beginning of this, I do play anything and run it. Hi there. We get to hear that voice. Uh, so now we're, we're well on our way. Um, all we need to do now is call this from Excel. Um, well, let's, we're not quite there yet. Let's make sure that we can actually uh, do something with this, with this string. So let's assume that the string is gonna look like this, Samantha, and then we'll, have a, we'll set the pitch as the second argument. So this is the kind of thing that these things are going to look like. Uh, so that's what arg string is gonna be. Arg string is gonna be the name of the, the voice we wanna use and then the pitch that we'd like that voice to have. Um, so we're gonna come into this play function and the first thing we need to do is split, uh, is set the delimiter so that we can tell AppleScript what character we wanna use to split our strings up. So we'll use this highly intuitive um, syntax to write set Apple scripts text item delimiter to set that to space, and then we'll do set text items to every text item of arg string. So this is going to make text items into an array containing the two elements of arg string. And now, instead of Samantha here, we will do, we'll, we'll concatenate this with um, to item one of text items, and then concatenate that back with this. So now if I run this, it should say it in Samantha's voice. The variable delimiter was not defined. Uh, text item delimiters is what I meant. Uh, Hi there. Great, but now if I change it to another name like Alex. Hi there. Now it's using Alex's voice, which is so cool. All right, so now I'm going to, uh, I, need this, I want to use the second um, part of arg string to set the pitch. So what I'm gonna, the way that I do that is I concatenate this then um, 
uh, I need to add a tag into the string that this thing is actually going to be saying. So here I will uh, take this and I will concatenate it. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to do this p base, and then I'm going to concatenate this with uh, item two of text items, which is the pitch, and then concatenate that with what will terminate the tag, which is this, and then the remainder of the text high there. Did I get that right? That looks right to me. Yes. And then I can set this to something else. Okay, okay, okay. Instead of saying hi there, let's just have him say la. La. Okay. La. La. Beautiful. Okay, so the last thing to do is actually call this from Visual Basic. So the way we're going to do that is just we need to build these strings to actually say them. So I'm going to go into the ninth row here and just write the voices that I want to use. So we'll write Samantha and we'll write uh, Victoria and we'll write uh, Alex and Fred and Ralph. And now that's going to be the voice, and here's where we put the pitch that we want to actually use. So what we'll do is, as we're going through and setting this color here, we'll also look into the cell value and see what's there. So we'll do, uh, so we need space for the voice, so we'll do dim voice as string and dim pitch as string. Okay. So first we'll get the voice, so we'll do, uh, so okay, we'll do if range, range, okay, wait, 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 we'll get the value, out. so we'll do, okay, we'll do pitch equals range of cells of seek step plus one. I'm not slowing down because I'm confused and can't remember the ridiculous syntax. I'm slowing down because I'm so excited about what's going to happen when we get this working. So that's the row index and the column index is going to be just the call. And then we'll call again, cells seek step plus one call. And uh, we'll get the value. So now the voice is that pitch. Um, and maybe the pitch will actually make this an integer. And now we'll do if pitch greater than zero, then we'll get the voice. The voice is going to be equal to range of cells of, and the row is going to be row nine, call cells nine call dot value, and then we call, we can call into our Apple script. We'll do Apple script task, and the script that we're going to call, the name of the file was play.script. The function that we want to call was play, and the string that we're going to call is just the voice concatenated with a space concatenated with the a string of the pitch. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. The very last thing that we want, oh, and then we need a, an end if, and if. Now, the very last thing I need to do is hop back into Apple Script and just make sure that this will run without us actually having to wait for this script to finish. So I'm going to go ahead and route standard out to dev null, and I'm also going to route standard error to the same place as dev null, and then run this as a background task. So, nah. so now if I run this, it should work. So let's test it by putting a 60 here and let's hit play. La. Yes. And now let's put a 60 here as well and a, a, a 30 here and a 30 here. And now let's hit play.
La la. Yes. <laughs> yes. Such. Okay, and now what we'll do is equal rand between. And we'll go between, for the women's voices need a higher pitch, so we'll go between 60 and 100. And we'll, we'll bring those, oh, we'll, we'll extend that down to here. And then uh, we'll tell you what, we'll extend it this way as well. And for the male voices, they tend to, they think they only work if it's in a lower range. So we'll do rand between um, maybe like 10 and 50. And then just extend this down and extend this over. And now let's hear this sequence in action. La 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 The male la. voices, the, the male voices, they're not where I want them to be. This should be ran between 50 and 80. Let's try this again. La 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 I know la it's hard even to listen to this it's difficult to listen to what's happening right now without falling out of your chair or weeping uncontrollably but I gotta tell you the music that I listened to today none of it sounds anything like this and I can only la. imagine that it's just la. because people haven't discovered la. Visual Basic yet. And they haven't discovered la. Microsoft Excel yet. La. And when they do, la. I feel la. like music is going to change forever. La. And we're never going to listen to music that sounds the same ever again. La. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you for being a part of this. Um, even though, honestly, you should be thanking me for letting you experience this. And, you know, I can't tell, I mean, I feel like I'm gonna make another video today. I'm just so excited to be making videos about using Microsoft Excel to make music. I, I, I feel like this could just go in so many directions and I'm so excited to be working with it. Um, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, farewell Max8. You know, we definitely don't need you anymore now that we have Excel. So um, yeah, look out for another Microsoft Excel music making tutorial coming very soon. Take care guys.